like you to think for a moment about something important. I want you to consider what it is you do with most of your day, just a typical day. How do you spend most of your time? What's your major activity? Most people don't think about this, but as I move on, you'll see why I think it's important. Now, a second thing I want you to think about is what's most important to you? What's the thing that you do in life that you value the most? And I'm going to bet that the most important thing to you, the thing that you value the most, isn't what you spend most of your time doing. Today, I want to talk about how it is that we spend our time. And as I do that, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel as well as to click that bell so you're notified of future videos. In her book, The Writing Life, Pulitzer Prize winning author Annie Dillard wrote, how we spend our days is, of course, how we spend our lives. I think that's a really important and profound statement, so I'm going to repeat that quote. How we spend our days is, of course, how we spend our lives. When we think about how we spend our days, you know, for most of us, we spend our days at work. We spend eight to ten hours a day in work-related activities. And if you commute, that in, that's part of work. Uh, your breaks at work are part of work. And for many people, it's not just that they have one job that's full-time, because that one job at full-time doesn't pay the bills. They have to work a second job. So a great deal of our time is spent in work. And many people find that the work they do just isn't rewarding. And that's led to what's been described as the phenomenon of quiet quitting. I understand quiet quitting as people recognizing that the work they do isn't fulfilling. And so they've decided to just do the bare minimum to get the paycheck. They'll do what's required, but not more than that. Because what they really value in life isn't that work. It's something else. And so they'll put their energy, they'll conserve their energy and work to put that energy towards that something else when they're away from work. In his 1990 book, Flow, The Psychology of Optimal Experience, Mahalai Chenzen Mahalai explored a concept that's become popular in uh, workplace literature. It's called Flow, based on the title of the book. And this concept of flow is about the experience of finding something fulfilling and transcending and meaningful within what it is we do. The original research on flow dates back to the 60s and 70s, I'm sorry, to the 70s and 80s. And it began with looking at artistic types of people you know, writers and artists and, and musicians, but also included people working on assembly lines, like in motor plants in the 70s, in the 80s. And, and what was discovered was that, you know, when people engage in this thing called flow, that, that there's sort of a transcendent experience where, where they step out of time and are fully engaged. And, and even in rudimentary work, like on an assembly line doing task after task repeatedly. That flow was experienced maybe because somebody made a game of the work they were doing, changed up their routine, tried to find different ways of doing it, so that was engaging, or because there was some greater value that the time doing this was providing for my family or putting my kids through school or whatever it might have been, so that there was a greater value to work. But, you know, work has changed a great deal since that original research happened. And people are finding a much more difficult time in experiencing flow within their workplace. Workplaces today are a lot like the work I do. So it sounds great. I'm a professor. I teach in a doctoral program. But what is it that I really do day to day? I'm teaching online, and my days are filled with getting things that students have written and following a prescribed rubric and evaluating that 
and I check the boxes and maybe I write some comments, but I'm really confined to that rubric in terms of how I'm supposed to evaluate. I'm told what I'm supposed to find important and what isn't important. It doesn't matter what I think as a professional. And so I do one of those, and I finish the rubric and file it, and then the next one comes and the next one, and another one, and then one after that, and that's my day. And my job is not really different today than the job of somebody in customer service who's working online, or a bookkeeper, or many other people who have prescribed activities that are told to do things in a certain way. And this kind of work really becomes mind-numbing and doesn't allow for any creativity. The experience of flow requires some key pieces to it. Flow requires that a person working find intrinsic value to the work, that there's clarity for the goals about the work. Why am I doing what I'm doing? And that there's a feeling of control over the work. And these things become lost, especially when we've added in recent years in corporate settings, the number of metrics that are measuring exactly what a worker does, how fast they're doing tasks, how long it takes them, and if it seems like the normal pace of doing things can include more work, then magically the workload is increased, but the compensation isn't. So this has led to not only quiet quitting, but to what some people are now calling quiet firing. That because there's a lack of control and value and no real increase incentive for compensation to the work, and the only way to make more money is to quit the job you have for the sake of another job, that now it's being viewed that corporations are engaging in quiet firing of employees. Now, in my 10-minute video, I can't change the state of work today, but I'm trying to give a brief description of how I see what's happening. And I want to ask, in this context of work today, how it is that we're able to meet the things that are important to us, to address what's most important in our life, so that how we spend our days reflects how we want to spend our lives. And I think we need to be more aware and conscious of the fact that the only way we can do this is by being very focused and deliberate about how it is that we work and do everything else that we do. For instance, if the way you want to lead your life is to continually grow as a person, then how do you do that in the context of your job? If what you want to be known for is a compassionate and kind person, what does that mean for you in the workplace, in a job that you don't find particularly rewarding? If you're goal is to really be the best person you can be and develop as much of yourself as you can, then how is it that you approach the place in which you spend most of your time? I'm not recommending that people just go out and quit their jobs because I don't know that one job is going to be much different than the next job. There are many ways in which corporations are all doing essentially the same thing in terms of organizing work. But it's within that context when, that we need to consider how it is that we choose to spend our days. Because the way in which we spend our days will be the way we spend our lives. And one of the things that may be helpful in sorting this out to understand how what I really want my life to be about can be infused into my work, maybe through spiritual direction, working individually with someone to talk about what it is you value most, and how that can shape and color the rest of your life. And if that's interesting to you, reach out to me. Let me know and we'll talk about that and to see how we can explore that. In the meantime, consider how you spend your days is of course how you spend your lives. Live richly and fully to get the most out of life. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with other, make me some comments in the comment section and know that I really appreciate the time you spend 
on spirituality beyond borders. Thank you.